heat flow. So temperature changes because energy is transferred into an object or out of an object. And the transfer of energy from high temperature to low temperature is uh, referred to as a heat flow. Now, heat flow uh, stops when the temperatures are equal and uh, there's various ways uh, that heat uh, can flow, different uh, channels. The, the simplest type of heat flow is conduction. So conduction is the exchange of energy that occurs by direct contact of two things that have different temperatures. So if I'm uh, standing on the floor in bare feet, then the uh, floor is cooler than my feet. And so there's a heat flow uh, out of uh, my foot and into the floor. Now, some materials are good thermal conductors, which means that uh, heat flows quickly. So when I'm standing on a tile floor, uh, the heat leaves um, my foot rather quickly. And uh, for this reason, the tile uh, feels like it's cold. On the other hand, if I'm standing on a carpet, the carpet is an insulator. And so the heat flow uh, is rather slow. And uh, for that reason, the carpet uh, feels warmer, even though if I took a thermometer and measured the temperature of the tile floor and the temperature of the carpet, they would both be at room temperature. Um, which tells you that uh, your sense of hot and cold is in reality a sense of how fast you're uh, losing heat uh, or gaining heat when, uh, when you're feeling uh, that the temperature is hot. Uh, let's look at a little demonstration. I'm going to wrap a dollar bill tightly around a copper pipe and um, apply a blowtorch. And There we go. That's good. So, so you see that the um, uh, money was not burned uh, because copper is a very good heat conductor. So the um, energy which was being delivered by that uh, high temperature flame uh, very quickly passed uh, out of the paper and into the copper. Uh, so uh, if you could feel that copper pipe, it was uh, starting to get hot in my hand. Now, paper is a heat insulator like wood, uh, but in this case, because it's such a thin layer and it's in uh, tight contact uh, with the pipe, the uh, heat uh, travels very easily from the paper into the pipe and uh, the pipe conducts the heat uh, very uh, quickly. Now, uh, conduction uh, you can think of all sorts of examples of um, conduction in cooking. So uh, if you open the oven uh, and the oven is hot, you can put your hand in the oven, even though it's at a very high temperature, uh, the air is an insulator. And so the heat uh, in the air travels rather slowly uh, into your hand. On the other hand, uh, the uh, metal uh, pan which has been sitting in the hot oven, if you touch that with your bare hands, you're going to be burned because metals are good conductors and so it's going to very quickly transfer a lot of energy into your hand. Uh, so in order to safely remove a metal pan from a hot oven, you use a uh, cloth uh, since cloth is a good um, insulator. Now, the second type of heat flow is convection. So convection is when energy is carried by a fluid uh, simply by the buoyant motion. Uh, so this buoyancy occurs since if you heat up a fluid it tends to uh, lower its density. If it's lighter then uh, it acquires buoyancy and it rises so we know the uh, hot air will rise and, and we can see that uh, if you look at the shadow of a candle, you see this um, 
uh, perturbation in the shadow, which is the hot air as it's uh, rising from the top of the candle. Uh, we can also um, see this heat uh, directly. So you see, if you look carefully, you see the shadow in that uh, candle. But now if I uh, take a little piece of paper and I put it on the side, uh, not much uh, happens because all the energy is rising straight up. But if I put the uh, piece of paper uh, above the candle, uh, well, it starts heating up and starts to be scorched uh, by that uh, very hot uh, current of air that's rising from the candle. Now, here's another demonstration. I have a large tube with a metal screen on one end. And uh, so here's the tube. There's the metal screen. And we place the tube uh, over the Bunsen burner, so it's, we're heating up that uh, screen, and uh, so the screen inside the tube is getting very hot. We're going to remove the tube. And you heard how it plays like, a, like an organ pipe. The uh, analysis of that is that uh, when I remove the tube from the flame, uh, hot air rises uh, from that uh, mesh screen inside the tube, and so I basically am blowing like it was a, an organ pipe. Uh, the tube um, vibrates with uh, natural frequency, and that depends on the length of the pipe. So a uh, long tube plays a fairly low note, and by having a large diameter of the tube, it, it plays it rather loud. Now, let's look at a, another demonstration uh, involving uh, buoyancy. Uh, so here I have this uh, candle. So the candle is uh, sitting at the bottom of this uh, tube, and I take out the partition. Now you notice that the candle uh, that was flickering before is now actually going out. So it just went out. So what happens here is when the partition is in the tube, uh, hot air rises on one side and that allows uh, fresh air to come in from the other side and that maintains the uh, combustion of the candle and the partition uh, separates uh, those two uh, currents of air. Now, if we uh, remove the partition, then uh, the cold air trying to come down and the hot air trying to get out uh, interfere with each other and they form some turbulence and that actually uh, disrupts the uh, convection. So you see there's, there's certain uh, convection patterns that uh, are set up. In this case, the partition allows that uh, inflow and outflow pattern to develop, but uh, in that narrow long tube, uh, the um, without the partition, uh, it disrupts the pattern. So um, this is related to uh, the form of a mushroom cloud. So as a very large mass of hot air is rising, uh, it tends to form this um, uh, mushroom type uh, shape. You have a, a fresh air uh, drawn in uh, along the stem as the hot air is rising. And then uh, if this, this rising motion is uh, fast enough, uh, it has formed these uh, vortex rings inside of the cloud. Now, the third type of uh, heat flow is uh, radiation. Uh, now, don't confuse this with radioactivity. Uh, radiation is simply uh, light 
that carries energy and so um, any type of light say from a, a burning fire just the um, if you stand near a fireplace it it feels warm because uh, it has a lot of mostly infrared uh, radiation uh, that comes from the fire uh, in fact it's uh, this heat flow is um, reflected by these uh, fire proximity suits so you have something which is silvered so that it reflects away that um, that energy which is in the form of light uh, so uh, in terms of using uh, radiation to heat something up uh, one of the extreme examples is uh, something like a heat ray um, and that was a weapon that was introduced in science fiction by H.G. Uh, Wells in the uh, War of the Worlds and uh, this is um, you know a little back when H.G. Wells introduced it uh, lasers didn't exist but nowadays uh, lasers are rather similar to um, what H.G. Wells imagined in his time now uh, not as common but uh, sometimes in science fiction you find the inverse of that which would be a freeze ray uh, something that instead of um, uh, having a heat flow uh, delivering energy uh, somehow removes energy from an object um, and right now we have no uh, technology that uh, has would be of the form of a freeze ray uh, the only thing you can do that mimics this is to uh, spray something which is very cold uh, but that's just simply uh, throwing something cold uh, onto something and um, lowering its temperature that way. Now, uh, getting back to radiation, uh, at say uh, room temperature or body temperature, uh, there is a weak amount of radiation which is emitted. Uh, our eyes are not sensitive to that um, radiation, which is mostly in the infrared, uh, but if you have special cameras you can uh, detect that so you see here is a camera uh, that um, has heat vision and it can basically see in the dark um, it doesn't need visible light to see it uh, the light emitted by the people uh, is enough to um, for the camera to see them uh, and in fact this was um, used uh, in an interesting way in the movie Predator where they had a uh, normal view and uh, heat vision uh, filmed at the same time. Let's see a little bit about the making of Predator. So doing the heat vision that uses to see. So that the audience doesn't just see heat, which is kind of a disorienting uh, image. We are shooting a regular color film of the background and also a uh, heat image all at the same time. And then combining them together later uh, optically. So in order to do that, both cameras have to see from the same perspective, which we accomplish with a beam splitter. So that the audience knows what they're looking at, and yet at the same time you can see a very startling uh, and spooky image of what the predator sees. And in this photo you see what a beam splitter looks like. If I have a laser shining into the beam splitter, it splits the beam into uh, two parts, one going through the block and one reflected uh, to the side. So in this case, the, uh, there would be a camera on one side, one another camera, the heat vision camera on the other side, and they would both be seeing uh, the same view. Uh, now, you uh, don't need a special camera to uh, detect uh, infrared. Uh, most digital uh, cameras are sensitive uh, in the infrared and so you can demonstrate this to yourself using a um, remote control so take a remote control and uh, if you look at it with your eye you don't see anything uh, but if you look at the remote control through your digital camera say on your cell phone you'll see that it is actually flashing light. So this is light which is invisible to the human eye, uh, but um, digital cameras um, are sensitive uh, in that range. 
So in uh, summary, uh, transferring energy from high temperature to low temperature is called heat flow. Uh, conduction is heat flow by direct physical contact of hot and cold objects. Convection is heat flow in a fluid, uh, say a liquid or a gas, uh, that's caused by warm fluid rising due to buoyancy. And finally, radiation is heat flow uh, due to light, uh, such as from a heat lamp or uh, from a fireplace. So these are all ways of, of carrying uh, energy and uh, taking that energy from um, something that's hot and moving it someplace that is cold.